Now, also some news that came out about Jackson State. If you haven't checked it, if you haven't checked out, shout out to Mo Carter. He's a journalist. He tagged me in this. Jackson State in the SWAC has set up some, some classic games that will take place in Birmingham. It says UAPB, Jackson State, and Southern will play in future games at Legion Field. Mo goes on to say that the SWAC will host a series of football games at Birmingham's Legion Field each next season, each of the next three seasons. The Birmingham City Council recently approved and recommended by the mayor. It also includes an option to renew for a two-year deal. The upcoming SWAC Classic Football Games in Birmingham are projected to feature the Jackson State Tigers led by Coach of the Year Deion Sanders versus U University of Arkansas Pine Bluff and head coach Doc Campbell in 2022. So JSU will play pay, ah, will play Pine Bluff in 2022, followed by Jackson State versus Southern in 23 and 24. The SWAC isn't dumb. The SWAC is trying to capitalize on the marketability and the presence of of Deion Sanders, of the presence of Jackson State. Jackson State going out there grabbing four and five star guys. You want to put them up front and center as many times as possible. That's not by accident. You want to show the world Travis Hunter. You want to show the world Kevin Coleman. You want to show the world these dudes. You want to, to broadcast and show off your biggest and brightest guys. And that is exactly why this is taking place. The city of Birmingham will provide incentives and kind of services to the SWAC to amount to exceed 200000 in year one and 300000 in year two and three of the agreement, which will take place at Legion Field Stadium. So why would the, why is this important? Because this, remember when I talked about TV deals, I've been on here talking about TV deals. I've been on here talking about money that the SWAC is going to make because of Deion Sanders, money that the SWAC has already made and what they're going to make moving forward because of Deion Sanders. Classics like this, where cities will pay you money to come play games in their stadiums, to come play games in their cities, to come play games at their places, this is going to continue. This is what happens when you recruit up. This is what happens when you show a national product. This is what happens when you do these th kind of things. Because because of what Coach Prime Deion Sanders is able to do in the recruiting world, and because of what he's able to do nationally, a state like Alabama, which is not, does it hope like Pine Bluff is in Arkansas, Southern is in Louisiana, but a state like Alabama is trying to get a piece of that pie. A state like Alabama is trying to get a piece of that swag pie, trying to get a piece of that Deion Sanders pie, trying to get a piece of that Kevin Coleman or that Travis Hunter or that Shadour Sanders pie. Like that is what's going to take place. They will pay you money, even though it has nothing to do with their state. They will pay you money because they know the people of their state will come to the game and spend money at the businesses in that state and come and try and people will travel to their state. Surrounding states will travel to the SWAT classic. You see how there's one common denominator in this sweat classic over the first three years. It's this guy with the big I believe hat, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, period. They're trying to capitalize and they're trying to make sure they get in on that swag pie because that swag pie, it, it's, it's real sweet and it's real good right here. It's real lucrative. They're willing to pay 200,000 in year one and 300,000 over the next two years. And that, my friends, is a discount. <laughs> that, my friends, is a discount. I will tell you, them getting Jackson State for three straight years in a SWAC classic game at 200,000. $500,000 and $800,000 total, under a million dollars, get three games with Jackson State in it, and you only paying, you're paying less than a million dollars, that is a discount because the city officials in Birmingham understand that they're going to make that million in year one. They are going to make that million dollars in year one. So it says the SWAC considered one of the most uh, historically premier the HBCU conferences in the country currently ranks in the elite in the national terms of alumni played, uh, you know, SWAC subdivision. Yeah. So that that's the article from Mo Carter. Let's see. Look, oh, this is this is key right here. This is shout out to Mo for putting this in there. When the SWAC plays in Birmingham, games are expected to generate significant revenue as well as put the city in center stage in front of a crop of new visitors, fans and national media. Visitors, fans, and national media. 
Come on now. Why else would visitors, fans, and national media? The SWAT Classic could have been made. They could have made the SWAT Classic 50 years ago. Orange Blossom Classic was created 50 years ago. Southern Heritage Classic was created a bunch of years ago. All of these other classics, the Florida Classic, the whatever classic, all of them were created in the Bayou Classic years ago. The SWAT Classic came along when a dude who was in the NFL Hall of Fame, who's in the College Football Hall of Fame, comes to one of the most prestigious schools in the SWAC and becomes Cody in his first fall season and wins the SWAC East and the SWAC Championship in his first fall season and goes to the Celebration Bowl because they're only paying playing less than a million dollars and they're going to get a million dollars in revenue in year one. Deion Sanders, according to Jackson, Jackson, the, you know, the city council or the people who take in revenue, they said he brought in $30 million during the fall. And I think that was an understatement. They said he brought in $30 million during the fall, which was a record. And I think that was underbidding him. And he even said it. He said, yo, that sounds kind of, that sounds kind of cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like that sounds kind of low. So, and it puts you on a national stage. Because all the cameras are going to flock to the SWAT Classic. All the ESPNs, the Fox Sports, the journalists, people like myself, we're going to be at the SWAT Classic. We're going to want to check it out. Birmingham ain't too far from where I'm at. You get what I'm saying? And you're going to get coverage in the city of Birmingham, in a place that has a lot, a lot of history, a lot of history that involves black folks. You know what I'm saying? That, that's great. It says the city is ready to open its doors to thousands of SWAC fans who will be coming over the next few years, Wooden said. We plan to roll out the red carpet and show, show why Birmingham is a special place. So the SWAC Classic is going on. The SWAC Classic is going to take place. And this is this is going to be great. Because uh, they could have, like, like Jamon, you're right. They could have featured Alabama A&M. JSU and Alabama A&M are playing in the Gulf Coast Challenge in Mobile on the 24th and the 20th. Yeah. Like this is this is gonna be big for Alabama. They could have put Alabama AM or Alabama State in this SWAT classic. They put JSU because JSU is gonna bring in a national audience. Because Coach Prime is a rock star. <laughs> He's a rock star head coach. And I bet in those next two years, and I bet in those next two years, when they have that two-year option, you'll see Grambling in there next. <laughs> you'll see Coach U and the G-Men. And all they're doing over there in Grambling, Louisiana, you'll see them in their next. And the SWAT Classic will feature Grambling versus somebody. Probably Grambling versus JSU or Grambling versus Alcorn or Grambling versus, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that, that's going to take place. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm, I'm going to check some of your comments and then I'm going to get out of here since they should have used Alabama schools against JSU and Southern. I mean, Stephen, that would make sense, but that they don't, they're not doing that because those Alabama schools don't have Coach Prime as their head coach. <laughs> they don't have Coach Prime rocking the house. They don't have Coach Prime doing the things that he's doing over those little Alabama schools. And, that, and that's no slight to Connor Maynard. That's no slap to Coach Maynard. He's, he's, he won the spring championship for whatever it's worth. You know what I'm saying? He had a quill glass, one of the most prolific passers in the history of the SWAC. But, you know, some people feel like their time is over. Jackson State, fam, you. Grambling, their time is now. So uh, someone says Birmingham is a shady place by taking food from Jackson, Mississippi, and returning pennies to JSU. Well, no, the school signed up for this. Cedric, I, I will say this. The school signed up for this. And JSU, the reason, here's what here's what they get out of it. So Alabama, Birmingham, they get the national exposure, of course. JSU, in their brains, gets to expand the reach. Now, granted, it's not super far. It's not like they're going out to California to play a game. But going to Birmingham, that's a new demographic. That's that's new fans that might who who may be closer to Alabama than they are Mississippi, and that might travel from Texas over to Alabama, or might travel. Make sure I'm getting my geography right from Oklahoma. You know, because maybe it's a you know a six hour drive and not an eight hour drive, or a four hour drive and not an eight hour drive. You know, to get to Birmingham as opposed to Jackson, Mississippi. So that is how JSU looks at it, and they get paid on top of it. They're talking about, you know, 300, 200,000 the first year, 300,000 the second year, 300,000 the third year. That doesn't sound like a lot into a school like the University of Alabama or the University of Mississippi or schools like that. That might not be a lot. But for Jackson State, that's a whole lot of money. For a Southern, that's a whole lot of money. For a Pine Bluff, that is a whole lot of money that they would not have gotten 
otherwise. So that is where that's where that's 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 the trade off. And once Jackson State continues to win swag championships or continues to bring in top recruiting class or continues to get these top dudes to come to the school, then they can negotiate bigger deals. OK, OK. You know what I'm saying? We sold out the SWAC Classic three years in a row. Alabama, Birmingham, you're up. Where's the check? You got to cut a bigger check. And if it ain't Alabama, Texas, come on. If you want the SWAC Classic, cut a big check. A city in Mississippi, if you want the Alabama cl- or the SWAT Classic, cut a big check. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's how you negotiate. You give them something. You know, when, when you when you sell a product, you do giveaways, you do something, you prove that the product is worth people buying it. You give them something, they get satisfied, and then they come and shop with you again. So so JSU is hoping, you know what I'm saying, that they're throwing it out there for a relatively fair price and then hoping that, these states or these cities, Birmingham or whoever, comes and shops with them again, which they will because those games are going to sell out. Come on. Are, are we uh, are we surprised that these games aren't? Do we think, like, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. Do you think these games aren't going to sell out? Do you think Coach Prime can't pull in max capacity at this stadium in Birmingham? I think he can. So that is, that is why uh, – that's why you do it. That's why you do it. You, you continue to expand your product. You continue to grow your brand. You continue, continue to get that national media attention that only, you know, doing things like pulling in a Travis Hunter can do, that only playing in games in different cities outside of Jackson can do, whether that's Miami for the Orange Blossom Classic, Memphis for the Southern Heritage Classic, now Birmingham for the SWAT Classic. You get what I'm saying? Like, like this is this is smart on JSU's part. Uh, yeah, coach is bringing the attention to all the HBC. Exactly. Because in these games, Pine Bluff was mentioned in that article. When's the last time we talked about Pine Bluff? Not just on this channel, but in, in SWAC spaces or HBC spaces, period. When's the last time we talked about Pine Bluff? It's been a long time. So Southern, Southern coach Dooley, it's good for them. It's good. It's good because if they go in there, they compete or, or possibly upset Jackson State. You think recruits going to start looking at Southern? Absolutely. freaking lootly. Hey, recruits are gonna you know, consider going to Southern? Absolutely. So, you know, we, we gotta take all of that into account. Uh, it says revenue numbers will climb when JSU and Alabama AM go classic. Uh, they see how much attention. Yeah, no, absolutely, Juwan. You're right. All of this stuff, like this is why it's big. This is why whether you love or hate Jackson State, whether you love or hate what Coach Prime is doing, you gotta respect it. You gotta respect it because this SWAT classic, they just made that up. <laughs> they just made that up to get Dion in a different game in a different city. Let's just be honest. They just made up the SWAT classic. They made they just literally just created it. It was announced today. They just created it to get Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and Jackson State in another game in another city outside of Jackson, Mississippi. They're pulling in. Look, we talked about the attendance at Jackson State. They pulled in 42,000 last year, a game, which set the FCS record. They're going to break that record this fall. Which probably someone somewhere north of forty eight to fifty. I said forty eight before Kevin Coleman and before signing day. I think it's going to be north of fifty. So they're going to pull in fifty thousand plus a game at Jackson, Mississippi. You don't think Alabama, Birmingham wants a piece of that? You don't think Orange Blossom Classic, Miami wants a piece of that? You don't think Memphis Southern Heritage Classic wants a piece of that? Jackson, Mississippi is about to pull in fifty thousand people a game. They're going to pull in north of 50,000. Every game, not just homecoming, all corn, southern, swag championship. We're talking about every single home game, I believe. I really do. They're going to pull in north of 50,000 a game. So, therefore, people want to get in on that. Other cities, other states, they want a piece of that. So, yeah, it's big picture thinking. Absolutely. 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 Uh. Just sent you the big okay. Appreciate that. <laughs> so some some people ain't too fond of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they, like, they, it's what it's looking like. I got just named off three of them: the Orange Blossom, the Southern Heritage. Now we got the SWAC, the SWAC Classic, because you know what I'm saying. Because typically, like, think about this. Typically, Jackson State and Pine Bluff, like SWAC teams, when you play a SWAC school, you you do a contract, or whatever. It's like home and away. You go to Grambling one year, Grambling comes to you the next year. You go to Jackson State one year, Jackson State comes to you the next year. So that benefits the individual schools. 
that been benefits, let's be honest, they benefits Jackson State when, you know, when Q Jackson and Grambling or or Coach McNair and Alcorn or whoever comes to Jackson and then the vice versa. It doesn't benefit the SWAC, although as far as financially, I'm going to say financially. But when you create a classic, ah, you create a classic. See, now the SWAC gets in on that check. Because I get it. We love we love college sports. We love the athletes. We love the coaches. But at the end of the day, it's a business. <laughs> the SWAC, the president of the SWAC, I forgot his name. He is a very, very, he's Dr. Something. He's a very, very smart man. He understands every classic neutral site game that he gets Jackson State involved in. The SWAC as a conference gets a kickback. The SWAC as a conference gets a little percentage. The SWAC as a conference gets paid. And so it only makes sense that we do Jackson State in as many classics, <laughs> as many neutral site games as possible because they're going to eat when they go play at home. They're going to eat with that 50,000 people. You know, you, you understand what 50,000 means. Like, like there's some team, a Kari Thompson came on here and he said there's some teams at, you know, there's SWAC schools in the SWAC that have stadiums that seat like 10,000. And so Jackson State has a 60,000 seat capacity. So that's six times the amount of some of these other schools. So Jackson State going to eat every time they play at home. But if the SWAC can get a piece of that, even if, because some of these stadiums can't hold 60,000 people with Jackson State draws. But even if it's 40,000 or 35 or 50 or, you know, or 60, I don't know how big the stadium in Birmingham is. I think they play bowl games there, so I think it's bigger. They're going to want a piece of that, and they're going to get a piece of that. And that's why it's beneficial for all parties involved. And that's why they're going to continue to create classics, the SWAC classic, the whatever classic, and put Jackson State in it because the SWAC is going to want to get a piece of all of those coins because it's all about coins at the end of the day. Sorry, not sorry. It's just the truth. Uh, it's about making money and making JSU a household name. JSU already a household name, but it's definitely about making that bread. 200000 in Beham or $1 million in Jackson. Well, you got to remember that Jackson State, like I said, continue, like, like Jansen said, is continue to make them a household name, continue to expand their brand. That's what they get out of it. They get to expand their brand because people are going to play, watch them play no matter what. But the SWAC, the SWAC is going to want a piece of that bread. Just, just point blank period not sure why jsu would play southern outside of jackson that makes five times as much like i said it's all about the, the swag is getting cut in on this this is not this is not by accident the swag trying to get a piece of that like the swag wants i hope i explained that pretty well why the swag would want jackson state in as many classics as possible it says coach prime is starting to take some of the power away from the two big mississippi sec schools you had <laughs> yeah that, he went viral for that too by the way tony he that that dude went viral he checked out a jsu game and he had the time of his life and he went viral so yeah uh it is a whole lot of revenue right it's a whole lot of revenue it says don't forget about another twenty thousand or so outside the stadium Woo, i gotta get down to the vet man I got to get down to the vet because you guys are telling me there's 20,000 people outside the game. Like, is that what you're saying, James? There's 20,000 people. So there's 60 in the game and another 20 outside the game. I got to see that from my own eyes. I, I have to see that because that because that sounds unreal. I've been to a lot of football games, a lot of college football games, like a lot of football games. I've never seen 60 inside, 20 outside. I've never seen that before in my life. Uh, I never have. I want to know how Beham, which is not a tourist destination, benefits both schools. It doesn't. Well, like I said, it benefits the SWAC. It, 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 Southern or Pine Bluff, Stephen, this is what I'm saying. The SWAC is constructing this. The SWAC. This is, you got to think, it's not Jackson State constructing this, not Southern or Pine Bluff. This is the SWAC because they understand the star power of Jackson State. They understand the star power of Deion Sanders. They understand the star power of Travis Hunter, Kevin Coleman, uh, Aubrey Miller, Shadur Sanders, Shiloh Sanders, etc., etc. They understand that star power. And they don't get money when Jackson State plays at home. They don't get money when Southern plays at home. But if you have a classic and you have festivities leading up to the classic and you have a press conference at the classic and you have a parade for the classic, that is revenue that the city of Birmingham gets, and there there is a kickback, is a keyword kickback that the SWAC as a conference 
gets. And Coach Prime gets to go out there, him and his team get to go out there and connect with the community, get to connect with the city of Birmingham, get to, you know, play some, you know, feelers in the recruiting grounds of Alabama, who's got some ballers, by the way, some ballers in Alabama. They get to do all of that. That's their benefit. But they, because they know they're going to get money no matter where they go. They're going to get money no matter where they go. So that is where the SWAC as a conference benefits. And when the conference benefits, all the other schools benefit. Not just Jackson State, not just Pine Bluff, not just Southern. All the schools benefit when the SWAC benefits because then the SWAC can go to an ESPN or they can go to a Fox Sports or a CBS or whoever and say, hey, look, hey, look, we just drew 50,000 in Birmingham. We're doing 50 a game, 55 a game or whatever in Jackson. We got Hugh Jackson, former NFL coach, that's doing this. We got Deion Sanders, coach of the year, that's doing this. He's getting this many impressions on social media. He's drawing 50, 55,000 a game at Jackson, Mississippi. And even when they travel outside of Jackson, they're doing 40 in Birmingham. They're doing 40 in, in, in Memphis or, or 50 in Memphis or another 40 in Miami. And that is how those TV deals, those numbers go up. So when you renegotiate with ESPN, they got to cut a bigger check. And when they cut a bigger check, you just the SWAC is able to distribute that money to all the different schools in the SWAC. And when all the different schools in the SWAC get paid, their facilities get better. The recruiting budgets go up. The better players come into the schools. And it benefits everyone. I hope I'm explaining that right. I, ho I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying. That is why, that is why Jackson State and Coach Prime would agree to a three-year deal in Birmingham at a SWAT classic that they just made up. I hope, I hope, you know what I'm saying? I hope you guys are, you know, can understand what I'm saying when I say that. So everything. Yeah. Like right us in hotels, restaurants, shopping, recreation, all of that goes up when a superstar team comes into your, comes into your city. All of that goes up. Jackson state, when this SWAT classic takes place, they haven't released their schedule, but when the SWAT classic takes place, there's, there's not, it's not just Saturday. It's not just Saturday. They're going to have a week-long event. It's going to be events at least starting Thursday, but probably Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the game on Saturday. All kinds of stuff will be happening that whole week in Birmingham. Parades, dinners, you know, award ceremony, banquets, all kinds of stuff will be happen, happening. After parties, after parties, you know what I'm saying, restaurant happy hours, all kinds of stuff. This is why you do this. This is why the SWAT creates these classics and puts Jackson State in all of them. It, it only makes sense. And, and you got to think they were doing that before Jackson State was who they were. This is before Travis Hunter. This is before going 11-1. and one. This is before the SWAT championship. They, they brought back the Orange Blossom Classic after 50 years. Now it helped the FAMU came into the, the conference, but they brought it back. They sold it out. And now it was probably the best game of the SWAT year because it honestly had determined the SWAT champion at the end of the day. Damn, you ran through the rest of the SWAC, and because of that first, second game of the year last year, it cost them a chance at the Celebration Bowl. So it's going to be bigger and better this year in Miami than last year. Because last year we were in a global pandemic, and, you know, co you know, the vid was still what it was. It's still around, but people are a little more lax. More people got their jabs, got their shots. You know what I'm saying? People, people are more cautious about what's taking place. So 